Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's find some chat. Should be handy. And I did fire up the restream, the restream bot. So it should be sending all of the chat from YouTube to Twitch and back and forth. That's what it tells me it's going to do. So today we'll find out if that's really what it's going to do. All right, all right, all right. I'm excited today. I have been waiting for this day. Hey, C. Gray. All right, Curmudgeon, Fabian, Mike, Joe, Glenn. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. I've been so excited about doing this uh, the stream about WireGuard for days. I wanted to do it on whatever day that was. I first figured it out or first got the help to figure it out. I certainly didn't do it by myself. Two streams in 12 hours, yep. Crunch time. This is number 11 of 12. We're almost there. Hey, oh, Adrian's here. Sweet. Adrian and Whiskers. I don't know if Whiskers is going to make it, but Adrian, uh, Madrian in the chat there is the mastermind behind what we're about to do here. A whole lot of it. He was uh, instrumental. There's no way I would have been able to get all this together and figured out and set up and stuff without some serious help. And he provided that help. So, all right, JJ Gadget is following. Oh, he's on Twitch. Fantastic. So tell me, is the chat going back and forth? Is there anybody from Twitch? Yeah, JJ Gadget's on Twitch. Are you seeing the Are you seeing the chat from YouTube and vice versa? WireGuard, holy crap. That's nice. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, did you mess with it, Frank? I didn't get to finish watching. I know you started playing with it and I heard that you were getting close and that potentially there's add-on possibility. I know it's tricky. Um... But yeah, that's uh, Whiskers was telling me that you got that you were working on it and um, it was looking good. So trying out Twitch today instead of YouTube, see great, cool. I know some guys like it. Frank's on it uh, a lot, and I, he even said that the video quality is better. That's that's fantastic. Watched you all the time on YouTube, but Twitch quality is so much better. All right, well, great. Twitch quality it is then. Um, hey, from the Netherlands. Hey, Erwin. Um, I am so close already on the Twitch, uh, for the, what do they really call it? They don't call it partner. They call it something else. But anyways, by the, by tomorrow, I think I'll be, I'll be qualified. So that's awesome. WireGuard is solid. It's the new Linux standard and built straight into the kernel. I'm, I'm glad that, uh, we got some knowledgeable guys here about this too, because you guys are going to be Twitch affiliate. That's right. But because you guys are going to be able to, uh, to do some good high level chatting while I'm walking through this setup here. Um, so for those who haven't heard of it before, I know I've got the screen kind of, so what you see, what's going on here in this console. Oh, it just disappeared. Probably just scrolled past it. Yeah. What's going on over here is I installed this morning Raspbian on just fresh install of, of Raspbian stretch, I think on a Raspberry Pi three. Um, or 3B, I suppose, not the plus for what it's worth. And uh, I just did the, I, I put the SSH file in the boot folder so that you can SSH in. I got the SSH up and then I just did uh, sudo apt-get uh, update and then upgrade. And so I'm just waiting for the upgrade to finish and then we're gonna have a fresh, fresh install to work from when we do this, uh, this WireGuard install today. All right, Phi got his first node red PIR flow working. Fantastic. All right, I know you were asking about that yesterday, so that's great. But yeah, the add-on is close. Perfect, perfect. So WireGuard, for the, for the people who don't know, who haven't heard of it before, WireGuard is, uh, and I'm going to tell you my remedial understanding of things, and then you've got smart guys in the chat, Frank and, and Luma and some of these guys that know a lot more can give you more details. But in my basic understanding of it, it's a it's a VPN. So um, it's a way to connect to your home network from outside. Oh, Adrian, thanks, man. My goodness, you give me a dollar? Oh, my gosh. Because of the funny signs. Off. <laughs> Watching because of the funny sign-offs. Well, the kids are all home today. So we'll have quite the circus when it comes to sign-off time today. We might even have Jackson in the sign-off today. He's done with He's done with Christmas Carol. All right, so WireGuard is a VPN. So why do you want it? Why do I want it? Well, um, 
I want to be able to connect to my home network when I'm at work so that I can tweak things. I want to be able to get into my home assistant files and mess with things, get directly into Sonoffs or other Tasmoda devices or whatever. Um, and to do that with just an open port is a bad idea. Um, I was using OpenVPN, which was pretty good, but um, we talked a couple days ago about why WireGuard is better than OpenVPN. And probably the biggest reason is that OpenVPN is still, even though it's should be very secure for a savvy hacker, it is still vulnerable. Um, people can still, they can find out that you're using OpenVPN on your network by pinging specific ports um, and they'll get a response from OpenVPN. WireGuard, on the other hand, will not give a response unless what you're sending at it is from WireGuard. And, and it has to recognize exactly what it is that's coming in or it won't respond. Is that fair enough, guys? Am I on the right track? So it makes it even more secure than OpenVPN. Then if you want to get deeper into it, you can look at things like, oh, I don't have that screenshot. Dang. Um, anytime that... Well, when you look at how big the the program is in like lines of code, most of the VPNs are hundreds of thousands of lines of code. So very complicated. A lot of it's dated. A lot of it's really old um, uh, based on stuff, uh, encryption stuff from a long time ago, decades ago. WireGuard is very new and it's very small. It's like 4,000 lines of code. It's very small. It's, it's, almost, it's almost as small as my YAML file, my configuration. Okay. Uh, Madrian, Madrian's idea says, drink a shot every time the doc leaks his password. I hope you got a big bottle, Adrian, because... <laughs> All right. So anyway, so WireGuard um, is a great way to do VPN, and it's it's super lightweight. Um, and I'll tell you something else about it while we're still... Because we're still waiting here for this thing to finish um, the upgrade. So another thing that I've discovered yesterday about it that I really enjoyed is that when I when I use uh, WireGuard to log into my home network from from the hospital from my laptop, I don't want all my traffic, all my internet traffic, to go through the VPN and then through my home network to Google or YouTube or whatever because we've got a limited we've got a limited amount of data allowance from our internet provider and if we go over that they charge us more money so i would rather do my basic surfing and you know watching frank's streams and such uh, on the hospital's uh, data line than instead of my own when i can so and with openvpn everything went through the home network so when i was connected to openvpn it was like my my laptop was sitting in my house it would it, and and everything that i accessed from the laptop was accessed through my home network from here out to wherever. Um, well, with WireGuard, uh, the the only things that you can set it so that it does the same. You can make WireGuard so that it will act the same way if you wanted to. Some people want to want to hide their internet traffic. I don't want to say that like it's a bad thing, but you know you don't. Maybe your maybe your work blocks certain sites, and you want to be able to access those sites, and so then you want to tunnel into your home network and then be able to access your different different sites. Um, so you can do that with WireGuard, but if you don't set it specifically to do that, then it will only, um, it will only act as a VPN for the traffic that goes directly to other IP addresses in your home network. So what that means is when I'm at work and I've got open, I mean, I've got WireGuard working, if I go to YouTube, it goes through the hospital's network. If I put in the IP address of my home assistant, uh, my home assistant machine, then it uses WireGuard and goes to that IP address in my home assistant machine and only uses it for that connection. So for me, that's great because that means I just leave it on all the time and I don't have to worry about, you know, watching a watching a, um, a video and using up all my data. So that's pretty cool. And then I, I, I haven't been leaving it on on my phone, but I suppose I could do that as well if I wanted to. Only if you override the default route will open VPN. With OpenVPN, will it route all the traffic down the VPN? Oh, really, John? So I must have done that. So I ran the PyVPN script when I installed it, and so it must have done that. What I'm explaining is called a split tunnel. Oh, cool. Perfect. And I, I would love that on the phone. That would be a, ideal for, for the phone because then the only time that it would use this tunnel, the WireGuard tunnel, 
would be when I'm accessing like the Home Assistant app. And everything else that I want to do, Google Maps and who knows what, um, would all be through my regular data on the phone. Beautiful. But there is a way you can set it so that it will do a single, I guess would be a, a unified tunnel or a single tunnel, right? There's a setting for that too. So we'll go through that. All right. Well, here we are. We're still doing this. Okay. A um, couple other things then to tell you. Right now, what I'll go through is um, I'll do a basic manual setup of WireGuard on a Raspberry Pi. Um, the way I've got it running is I've got a Raspberry Pi sitting by the desk here and its sole purpose is to run the VPN. So um, that's what I'll show you how to do. There, there's a million other ways you could do it. If you go to the WireGuard website, they have all the different kinds of installations. You can install it on everything except I guess Windows still, right? But you can't install it on Windows yet. But here's all the different kinds of operating systems coming soon for Windows, which will be nice because I'm sure a lot of people will want to have, even if you don't run your WireGuard server as uh, on a Windows machine, um, which you might want to, but you, you, you probably are going to want some clients that are Windows. But, um, so what we're going to have here is different levels of, of installation. So what I'll do first is the full on manual installation. We'll go through every line and we'll just, we'll just do it every line one at a time. And that's a good way to do it. Cause I think then you, for me, for sure, I understand better what's, what's going on, uh, in the, in the program and how the configuration is working. Um, so we'll go through it one at a time and just do it manually. Then we've got a, a script that Adrian made that, uh, will help us to set up users. Uh, easier. So we get to skip a few steps and set up the users in a really nice way with a, it brings up a QR code so you can just snap it with your phone and it's really slick. It's really nice. Um, then Whiskers is working on a script that looks a lot like PyVPN where it's all, uh, you know, it, it prompts you for specific information. You put your answers in and then it builds your configurations and everything. So that's pretty cool. Um, he's still, he's still fine tuning that. I think it's, it would probably function if we tried it right now, but he, he's still working on getting a, uh, getting it full production level. So, but that'll be an option. So, um, each of those gets a little bit, a little bit easier to, to, um, configure. And then Frank is close to even having uh, potentially an add on for HASS.io. So that'll be fantastic. All right, man, I should have started this sooner. <laughs> so we're going to have to do the kernel headers here in a minute too. So we can chat for a few minutes while that's still firing up. What questions do you guys have? We've got some masters of VPN-ness in the chat here. Can you guys see the chat? Do you guys want the chat on the screen? Let me know if you want the chat on the screen. If you don't, I'll, I'll expand my WireGuard window here a little bit. But if everybody's getting the chat on both, on both platforms, on Twitch and YouTube, then We'll let it be. All right. Might do WireGuard at another location. Does it play nice with Unify VPN? What do you think? Adrian Luma, what do you think? What is the meaning of life? The meaning of life is to not have to touch a light switch ever. <laughs> that's, that's our purpose here, is to always be able to see where we're going without ever having to touch a light switch. <laughs> Why upgrade took so long? Installed it yesterday, freshly downloaded Raspbian, and there was only five or six packages. Uh, this is probably an old one. I think I, I, I didn't re-download a new one. So I think this is from like June. <laughs> so sorry. I, I should have started this a little bit sooner. <laughs> 42. What's 42? Is that the answer to the meaning of life? About the Node Red stream. Just finished watching. There was one thing in there that was not correct. It was about using long-lived access token. The add-on does not use that. Uh, instead, it cycles keys on each start. Oh, okay, Frank, thank you. Thank you. Clear that up. Yeah, I, I wondered about that because I thought, oh, can you do that automatically? Can you set up a long-lived key automatically? But no, apparently you can't. So it gets a new one every time. So fantastic. Won't be long before we are thinking lights on and they work. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Just had a bad thought. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I'm thinking. Uh, it's a good thing it doesn't work when you think close off. 
<laughs> Did you guys catch that? I uh, hope, hope the kids aren't watching. <sighs> oh my gosh. That was good. All right. Hey, we're done. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. A dirty mind is a joy forever. Oh, gracious. All right. Mm, I cannot open display. Okay, good. So we're here. Here we are. Let's start this up at the top. We'll just put in a quick clear. And we'll go to the top. Okay, fantastic. All right, here we go. Now, uh, follow along. I got distracted. I totally got distracted. I know, Randy. I'm sorry. You're so disappointed. <laughs> Is there gin in that bottle? No, it's just Diet Dr. Pepper. I'm leaving that I'm leaving that to Adrian. Adrian's going to take a, a drink of something strong every time I... Um, Every time I really, uh, reveal my password. <laughs> Reboot for sure. Okay. We'll give it a minute. Give it a minute to start up. I got distracted. Did you manage to have Google Home to read a temperature sensor and not thermostat? Um... That's a good question. I don't I don't know. I bet you somebody can help though. The doctor drinks the doctor. Yeah, that's right, I do. I'm a Dr. Pepper aholic. That is the truth. Okay, sweet, it's ready. Okay, we're in. All right. You could also do this with um if you because this is a full Raspbian install, you could just connect a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse directly to the Raspberry Pi if you wanted to. You don't have to do this SSH part. All right. What are we doing today? We are doing WireGuard. Let's stretch this out so that we can fill what available screen we have since we're not going to do the chat. Last night we had the chat on there so that everybody could see it, but now we got the the cross. We're crossing the streams. We're crossing the chat, the chat streams. Oh, really? Only Alexa can read the sensors? Oh, that's a bummer. I'll have to work on that. Finally got to a live stream, Dan. Fantastic. Okay, so here we go. WireGuard, one line at a time. Adrian is a master, and this is available right here for everybody to follow along at home. There is the, the WireGuard. And if you, if you just Google search Raspberry Pi WireGuard, this is the first thing that pops up and it's like three days old. <laughs> so how about that? WireGuard again, Jeff? Yes, but this time we're actually going to install WireGuard. We're not just going to talk about it. We're going to go through the whole install so we can, we can do it from start to finish. All right, so this is so slick and so nice and built for dudes like me that we could just copy and paste. If I can get Control C and Control V to obey, Control C, Control V. What? Don't tell me. Am I going to have to do this? There it goes. Oh, just right click. Different different terminal. Okay. There we go. We'll start with that. So all we're doing here is, this is kernel headers. Oh, am I going to have to reboot after the kernel headers too? I guess it won't matter. It's not a long reboot process. So. WireGuard again. Right click the mouse. Thank you, Mark. Oh, sorry, Mark. We Yeah, we'll chat after. I didn't get back to you. No reboot. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. So what are you guys up to today? Besides watching this wonderful WireGuard stream. All right. What is the security vulnerability you've mentioned a number of times on prior streams? I run a VPN server on my PFSense router firewall, and I'm unaware of known vulnerability. Thanks, Jim. Are you using... Uh, well, some of these other guys in the chat could probably give you more specifics, but... Um, as I understand it, if, if there, I guess, a, depending on the version of OpenVPN, at least that's the one that, that um, people have talked to me about, um, there is some way for people to attack specific um, versions of OpenVPN and gain access. And so if you're using OpenVPN, it, it, it advertises itself. It makes itself available if somebody pings that port and it says, yes, I'm OpenVPN, come on, come on in. Or at least it says, I'm OpenVPN, give me your key. And then depend, and it, and it, and in some cases it can say, this is my version. And based on that version, they, other hackers or whatever can know uh, ways to get in. I don't know the specifics of, of that any more than that. 
Um, but that's how that's how I understand it. Sorry, that's probably not very not very clear, but uh, I bet you a couple guys in the chat here can can tell us maybe a little bit more about it. My love for WireGuard and hope it gets merged soon. Maybe the code isn't perfect, but it's skimmed. So you want it merged into Linux, right? You want it merged into the into Linux kernel. Oh, it's a work of art. Oh, Linus said that. I thought that was you saying that, Luma. Linus said that. Well, then that's a that's pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing. Even if you change the default port, yeah, Jim, because they can scan every port. They'll just they'll just you know they've got bots doing this. It's not like somebody has to sit at a keyboard. So they'll just scan every single port. And if they find a port that's VPN that's open VPN and advertising itself as open VPN, then they can start pounding on it. Where this, they they could ping every port, and one of those ports might be a WireGuard port, and they'll just pass on by. Do you guys remember that movie? You remember Flash Gordon when the when the dude was sticking his hand in the in the uh, in that thing with the monster in it, and maybe getting spiked in the hand. I feel it's kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyways. Okay, next line. So we just installed the uh, kernel headers. Now we're just going to do this. We're just going to grab this whole big echo line here and copy that guy. 1.18 miles, 1.9 kilometers, northwest of the center of Alpine, Utah. I said the E word. I changed the... Uh, I have two Amazon Echoes in my office, and one of them has the wake word echo. <laughs> okay. All right. At your son's university watching the stream, I'll say this. Fantastic. Okay, so we just did that part. No big deal. That was done. Next line. We're going to install Dir Manager. You guys, this is going to be so easy. You're going to see me just do a lot of copying and pasting, at least the beginning. We'll get. We'll have to get into some file editing here in a minute or two. Uh, can I use Nano on this? I should be able to, right? Yeah, because this is inside that pie. So, of course, I can use Nano. Sorry. I just was confused for a minute thinking because this was oop, because this was uh, doing this from Windows. All right. In Thailand. Oh, it's, it's early. 1230? That's early. Thanks for being here, Willem. It's awesome. Okay, so now we're going to go grab this key server. We're going to run this key server command. Gotta say, I don't know exactly what that does. Simple as that though, done. Now we're gonna run this. Uh, and I guess what we're doing here is we're, we're allowing the installation of some unstable parts, unstable packages, or at least that are on some list of unstable things. Is that true? Now I've gotta do another update, but I don't have to do an upgrade here. This is just to update the list of packages, right? Because when I did this, change this to uh, include unstable packages, then I do the update and it now knows what those new packages are going to be. Okay. If I set up WireGuard, do I change my connections for configurator IDE node red back to HTTP rather than HTTPS? Um, yeah, I think you, you probably would. Maybe the guys can tell you otherwise. Can you guys answer Rob and see if that's not true? I don't know if you would have to do that. And maybe if you have all that working for you, you don't need all of this. Um, this is, I'm doing this. I'm actually, I'm doing this because I want access to my whole, to everything in my network, not just home assistant and not just the home assistant bits like um, the configurator and IDE and such. Uh, I want access to any computer in my house. Um, and I think if, if what you want to do, oops, if what you want to do is just access home assistant, you can do this, you can do wire guard like this and, and it will serve as a bridge for a time until we get the home assistant cloud encrypted connection solid so that you can open the home assistant app and it'll make an encrypted secure connection to your home assistant instance on your home network without worrying about installing in, uh, encryption on your own or anything like that. It'll, it'll happen. So, and like the doc says, then you get access to everything else. Yeah. I like having a VPN into the house. It's really handy. You know, IP cameras, you got, there's all kinds of things that you can do. And even like, like, um, 
if somebody's having a problem, my wife's having a problem or something, something's not working, by being able, being able to VPN into the house, it's like I'm sitting at my desk right here and I could just start figuring out what's wrong and where it's, and where it went wrong. Control thing, you, you can go to each, to each uh, individual, individually connected device on your, on your home automation stuff and troubleshoot each device instead of just being access, uh, instead of just accessing home assistant. Yeah. It is very handy, JJ. Very, very handy. Okay, so now we're on the step where we are going to install WireGuard. So apt to get WireGuard. Bum, ba, bum. Do I want to continue? For sure. Oh, was thinking about using fewer ports forwarded. Yeah, this is just, you'll, you'll forward one port with this and you won't have anything else. You won't have to have any more ports forwarded or no more ports open at all. So very, I mean, as far as outside access, maybe you guys can tell me, I don't know if it gets any more secure than, than this. Nick says, what's the difference between WireGuard and um, TeamViewer? That's a great question. I don't know much about TeamViewer, so, but I bet some of these guys in the chat can tell you. Is our WireGuard for client for Windows officially not it. it it not yet there's not they they're working on it and these guys are doing a great job what's his name is it jared or jason i think his name's jason <laughs> but now we need a video to, a series of videos on how to stop alexa ip cameras etc from going outside the LAN. yeah Yep. <laughs> we try and we try and limit how much cloud we use. Um, that's kind of one of the home assistant, one of the points of home assistant. But yeah, if you if you use their apps and stuff, you're giving it all to them. Team viewer is for sharing your desktop. Oh, okay. Visually. Okay. So I use uh, like I, I've had I had to use it a couple times when I was doing this because I was doing this WireGuard setup with with Adrian and Whiskers help. I was doing it from work. And so I was using uh, VPN and I was in, on the same Pi and then I was configuring WireGuard. And when I had to, there was time where I had to shut down the VPN and start or stop and start WireGuard. And all of a sudden I was without a connection to the house. Like I, I, I had stopped my VPN on the Pi and I had stopped WireGuard on the Pi and then I couldn't get in. So what I used was just Google um, desktop, remote desktop which I cannot imagine is terribly secure, but. Hey, Robert from Tennessee, how's it going? WireGuard is like connecting to your home network from not home. Team viewer is just remote desktop, okay. How, how secure are these remote desktops? I gotta believe they're not very secure. I mean, I guess they must have some kind of an encryption, but I don't know. There's no released vulnerability in current open VPN. That's true, you're probably right, John. You're probably right. But if you hadn't updated and you were running an older version, there there potentially were. And a guy like me, you know, I, I installed OpenVPN six months ago or something and then just let it cruise. And I probably would never update it unless it was set to automatically update, which I know I don't know if you can do that. So there are vulnerabilities in some of the encryption protocols, thanks to NSA brute force, some of them. Okay, cool. Citrix ICA solid. Cool. Remote. Okay. Team viewer for family tech support. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good one. I, I'm sure re remoting de remote desktop. I think that's kind of the purpose, isn't it? Remote desktop. The purpose of remote desktop is kind of tech support. Let somebody just, cause it's so much easier than saying, okay, now click, you should see a menu that says this, click there. You should see a menu that says this, click there. If you just let, can I just take over, you know, just move away from the keyboard and let me do this. It's a lot easier. All right, so we got WireGuard installed. We're going to do a reboot. And let's face it, all of us at some level are family tech support, right? No matter how big or small your family is, if you're into this kind of stuff, you're going to be the family tech support. If you're not careful, you'll be the whole neighborhood tech support, which isn't always a bad thing. It's good to help. It's good to use your skills to help others. Boom. Okay, we're back. All right. So we just did that done. 
Um, okay, so this is this is important. If this is for a Raspberry Pi, I have a 3B. If you're using an older one, zero or one, then you need to do manual compiling. Um, but there is this. Okay, oh, so that's that. So now we're gonna run this and I should, this is gonna set up our IP forwarding something, Linux magic. And there it goes. Done. A reboot again. Okie dokie. Do, 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 do. Use tab for autocomplete commands. Oh. It's not quite back up yet. I jumped the gun. Oh, no. Yeah, it is. Okay, great. My chair is squeaking a lot today. Do you guys hear that? Is that bothering you? Chromebook rocks? Oh, cool. You do? You like a Chromebook? Maybe I'll try that someday. Hey, how's it going? Dr. Z's with an S. <laughs> Basic pilot. How you doing, man? All right. So we just did this reboot. Now we're going to check and make sure that it is working, that we've got our net IPv4 IP forward working. Moment of truth number one. Yes. Okay. I'm not surprised at all, Adrian. Not surprised at all. I knew it was going to work. Configure WireGuard. Okay. So there's two ways to set up WireGuard clients manually, which is what we're going to do now, or through this uh, semi automatic, which sounds like a gun, <laughs> semi automatic mode via WireGuard user management script. So this is Adrian's fancy script that I used um, as well. And it's very fun. It's easy. It's nice. It's nice because you get the, you can take a picture. So what I'd like to do today, depending on time is we'll go through this manual setup. Um, but then we'll run this. We'll do this also. We'll run this script to, we'll back up a little bit and then we'll run this script to, uh, to use that. Because I think if I was going to do it by, you know, with like actually do it again, this is probably what I would do because I liked do, being able to set up the client by just taking a snapshot of the QR code was very handy. All right. But since we're not going to do that today or not going to do that this at, right now, we're going to do it the long way. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is we need to generate our keys, generate our, our private and public keys. So I hope Adrian has his, his flask handy because we are about to uh, reveal some keys. These are new keys. They're small keys and they're going to be deleted as soon as we're done with the stream. So you can, if anybody wants to try and hack, they're going to have a very small window of time to be able to jump in. Um, cause obviously these are not my real keys that I'm really using. All right. So now we've made this, uh, keys directory and now we're going to use key gen, which is a wire guard command, I suppose. And we're going to set up the key for server private. Okay. Server private dot key. And it says, Hey, this is going to be accessible to the world. You, that's okay. That's okay. And the way Adrian did this script or this, uh, this direction is really nice because he shows you here in blue, what you're going to see on the screen. So if you see what he's shown here, then you're in, then you're in good shape. Opening the bottle. <laughs> <sighs> Why two echoes in my office? Why not? Because I don't have room for three. <laughs> uh, actually, I have I have two Amazon Echo. No, I have two Amazon Echoes plus Google Home Mini plus this uh, this little guy, which maybe not very many of you have seen yet because I ordered it as soon as it became available and it just came in the mail a week or so ago. This is the um, the Echo input. So all this, this doesn't have a speaker. So all this is, is the brains that you get in an echo dot, um, with a, with a power button and a mute button and an, and a, and a stereo jack output. And then you connect this, you could do it through Bluetooth or you can do it through the, the stereo jack, the one eighth inch jack. And, uh, so this is cool because my echo dot that I use on my desk that I call computer, um, I only use it really to, I mean, it's piped in through speakers in the office. So I'm going to use this for that. So I have four of those devices in this tiny little 10 foot by 10 foot room. <laughs> All right. Command unmask user is missing. That's why you get the warning. It should be added. Okay. Adrian, Frank, maybe you guys can get together and decide if that's something we need to do. Um, 
But anyways, it works without it, whatever it is. Okay, next step. We're going to now make another key. This one is going to be, we're going to make, let's see, oh, did I skip one? Yeah, I did. Oh, this, now we're going to make a public key. So the way that WireGuard does this, you generate the private key, and then based on whatever the private key is, it's got its own way of figuring out uh, what to make the public key. Okay, so what we're going to do is take, we're going to do this pub key command, and it's going to take the, it's going to make the public key based on server private key. All right. Done. And now we're going to make a client. We're going to make client number one key. So we've got our two server keys, public and private server keys. And now we're going to make a client key, a public, a private one first. And then based on the private key, it will make a public key. And it says once again, hey, this is going to be you know, accessible to the world. So figure out what double zero seven seven is. All right. So now here's the part where we take the private key and we create the public key. Done. And now when we LS, let's clear. I, I don't like it being at the bottom of the screen. And now when we LS, we'll see that there are now four files here. Cl uh, client one private, client one public, server private, and server public. Success. All right. Now is when Adrian gets his bottle out. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at the contents of these keys. We're going to actually open up these keys and look inside. So we'll use cat, which is a command that just lets us print what's there. And there it goes. Drink up, Adrian. Uh, now what you want to do is you want to save these someplace because we're going to need to paste them in someplace else. So I'm just going to simply open a notepad here. When I was doing this on my laptop from work, I just opened the notes app and just copied and pasted them in there um, for easy access. And the nice thing then was when I was doing this manually was uh, I could also then open the same notes app in my phone and they had been transferred there and then I just deleted them. All right, so I'm just going to grab this whole thing, control C, and hopefully it will take it, paste it all in. Great. So I want to know that this is the server public key. And there it is, server public key. Okay. So now we're going to do that um, for the rest of them as well. I'm going to do that now just to get them all. So we're going to do cat and then we'll do private. I don't know if you need to do all these, but I'm going to do them so that I've got them handy uh, for copying and pasting in a few minutes. And then we're going to do the client one private. If I just right click here, is it copying that? And then public. Okay. So I now have four unique keys, two for the server and two for the client. Done. All right. Next, we are done. So let's do this. Now we're going to set up the WireGuard interface on the server. Great to see. I need to keep my private key secret. Yeah, this isn't really my private key, Phil, but yes. Public key is safe. It's public. Private key. It, I might not even need to show because it, it generates the private key based on the public key. So I don't even know. We'll have to see if I even have to paste that in. I can't remember the steps exactly in my head, but we'll see in just a minute. You don't want to keep these keys hanging around, right? What is the default key length? It's really short. I mean, how many characters is that? 30 maybe? Something like that? I haven't counted them, but it's short. I mean, if you look at that versus uh, versus uh, some of the um, open VPN keys that are, you know, like a page long. But, I don't know. Apparently it's safe. Safe enough. Everybody, everybody thinks it's awesome. I thought that too. Generate the public key from the private key. I'm sorry, not the other way around. Thank you. Thank you. Cha cha cha. <laughs> All right. So now we're gonna we're gonna edit our configuration file for our server. 
So we'll copy this line here. And this is how we're going to oops, copy. There it goes. This is how we're telling WireGuard what it needs to know to be able to run um, on the server. And it's such a short, like the configuration file is this. That's it. So you grab all this, copy it, paste it into nano over here. And there you go. Now there's a couple things here where, that we have to do. So what we need to do, this is where the notepad part came in, where we just uh, pasted those things into our notepad. So now there's a couple places here where we need to we need to replace something with something else. So we're going to go up here first and do the server private key. So we're going to erase that. And we'll go over here and get our server private key right there. Copy that. Whoa, whoa, copy. Go back over here and paste it in. Okay. Fix that. <clears throat> now we do the client public key. So we have the server private key and the client public key in this file because this is the one that's on the server. Client public. Okay. And then <clears throat> this uh, allowed IPs. Um, this should be a, a safe one to use. You, this just can't be what your whatever your home network subnet is, right? So you should be able to leave that. I don't think anybody's going to have 192.168.99. So this should be fine. You should you should be able to leave this as is. What's happening, Indy? We're doing WireGuard. We're doing a manual WireGuard install on a Raspberry Pi so that we can VPN into our home networks super securely, and it's awesome. Okay. So does that look good, guys? Oh, the other thing is the port up here. So uh, I'm going to change this port. This is uh, a, an example port. You can use any port you want. Just make sure that you use the same port in all of your um, configuration files, what, all of them, meaning the server and any of your clients. Um, so I already have my actual main one is running on that port. Great, now you know which port it is, but good luck anyways. Um, so I'm going to change this to a different port. I'm just going to do one instead. Okay. All right. Ken subscribe. Thank you, man. Ken win. Okay. Uh, and then this is assigning the uh, IP address of the um, server, right? And we're doing it on this, this same subnet. What we want to do is make sure that when this, when this client gets one, that it's not getting the same one. So we use this one as number one and this one as uh, number two. Sound good? We'll definitely do a lab on it. Probably is not integrated into PFSense. Okay, good. You guys are talking about something else. You're funny, Dr. Z's. I'm good. I'm glad. I hope to be funny. <laughs> okay, so I think we're done. Unless anybody says uh, I'm missing something. This is the part where getting distracted can be deadly. But I think we're good. So now I'm just going to control X. And do I want to save it? Yes, I do. And I want to save it as WG0.conf. And done. Sweet. Okay, so now we've got, and that's it. Like the server is set up. That was the entire configuration. That's it for the, for the, for the server. Um, so we start it with WG quick up and we tell it which configuration, the WG zero. So that's it. This is the command that you'll use to start it up every time. So if you ever had to turn it off and turn it back on, you use WG quick up to turn it on, WG quick down to turn it off. And there it goes. I don't see any errors. Does it look like we match what's here? This looks a little bit different, this IP table stuff. It looks a little bit different, but I think we're good still. <clears throat> All right. Now we're going to check to see if it's working. So we'll just do WG, sudo WG. And it's working. There's our keys. Everything's good. It hides the private keys at this point. I think we should still make Adrian take a shot, but you know. All right, now we can launch at startup automatically, which is good. We want that. So we're going to copy this line so that it will start every time we fire up the Pi. Done. OK, cool. So that's it. That The setup, the wire guard server is set up and running simple as that is that awesome or what uh looks good okay thank you thank you adrian all right 
<clears throat> now set up clients. So as we said, well, I, maybe I didn't say it today. WireGuard, one of the cool things about WireGuard that uh, is different than, um, well, maybe it's not different than OpenVPN, but I guess in, in my mind it is. Um, it's just one bit of software. So it's not a server software and then a separate client software. Now there, we'll go through the iPhone app and that's how we'll set up the client. But um, the, in general, if you're setting this up on a different computer, you do the setup, sorry, you do the setup the same. I'm gonna mute that. That's a smart thing to do. You do the setup the same. It's the same, um, the same program is running. WireGuard is the same. You just change the configuration if it's a client versus if it's a server. If it's the server, it's different than if it's the client. That's it. Okay. All right. This will be a short live stream. <laughs> because why? Because we're done? We're not done. This is going to be fun. I was expecting this to be a long live stream. We're already 45 minutes in. And then once we get done with this, we can play. I'm, I'm having fun. I, this 12 streams of Christmas has been a blast. I have, I have had so much fun. And, um, and tomorrow's the last one. Tomorrow's 12. This is number 11. Tomorrow's number 12. So uh, I'm going to miss it. So we're going to stretch out these last couple and make it fun, make it last. Okay, so now we're going to do a configuration. So, or a uh, client configuration. So to install it on other uh, machines, you go here and it will tell you what you need to do. What we're going to do is iOS. So you go to iOS and they just this week made the official WireGuard app uh, official. Prior to a couple of days ago, you had to install Test Flight, which is a, a way that you can use um, apps that are still in development or still sort of beta by the developer. But now you can use this. Um, and oh, let's do this thing. Did, did you guys did I do the power mirror the other day? Let's do power mirror. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it a power mirror? Yes. A power mirror. We'll start that up on the Ophono also. That's Spanish. <laughs> okay, sweet. So one thing to tell you here as we scroll through my mini apps is if you go to the app store, I'll do it on the phone. I still have my open VPN thing up there. If you go to the app store, now is another time where I may reveal a password. We'll find out. If you search in here for WireGuard, I want to send a warning on behalf of uh, Jason about, oh good, it's not the first one anymore, about this one, this TuneSafe VPN. So the, the good fella who made WireGuard, great guy, good intentions, wants to do things the right way, um, he is not friendly with these guys. The guys that did this tune safe. Um, these guys are, um, I don't know, trying to take advantage of work that he did, I guess, or um, build a, a business based on his work and such and, and not cooperating with him apparently. So do not download this app, the tune safe app. Just skip that. Don't, don't do it. Won't, you won't need to anymore because when you do WireGuard, the first thing that comes up is this WireGuard app. It's funny that it says get. Oh, it's probably because I'm still using the beta one. Well, we won't get it this time. We'll just use my beta one still. So, okay. So now we're going to go back to this and um, example configuration. So this is an example if you're using uh, something else. Like we were using my MacBook Pro. So we had to do it differently and we set up the client configuration in this way. But the important thing to look at is how this is structured. Because if you're doing this on you know, a different machine, instead of on the phone, then you'll need to make a configuration similar to what we just did. You go through the rest of the steps, you install WireGuard, uh, and then you, you um, get to this point and you create the configuration file and you put this stuff in there. So what we do, if you remember, if you go back to what our other configuration looked like, we said that the client could be the available IP addresses was anything from two up. So this one's going to be two. That's our interface. That's this device that we're working on. This client is going to be two. Uh, then we will paste in here the client one private key. 
And then for the endpoint, oh, there's a couple things here to, that are important to talk about. The endpoint, you're going to need a, this will be your home IP public address. So you could just put your IP address in there, your public IP address, but we all know why we don't do that uh, with, um, besides security, I guess, but uh, it can change. So if it changes, then you won't be able to connect. So this is a time where you use DuckDNS again. So go find a, get a DuckDNS address and that's what will go here. This is the port and you remember I changed my port to one. So we're going to do that. And then you will paste in from the notepad, the server public key. So now we have, we will have used all four of those keys. All right. And then tell this one, the allowed IP address. So this is a good example. Now let's do it. it well, let's actually do it here. Oh, did it turn off? Why did it do that? No, nope, it didn't turn off. Come on, you, what you doing? Oh, cool. Use power meter scan. Oh, that's cool. All right. Hey, come on. Why is it not? Where'd it go? Oh, it did turn off. There we go. I guess you can't let your phone fall asleep when you're using this. All right. Oh, that's my alarm clocks. Okay. So now we're going to go into the WireGuard app and we are just going to add a new client. So we hit the plus and we're going to do it from scratch because we're going to, we're doing things the, the long way. All right. So give it a name. This is going to be stream one private key. Now this is a time where how am I going to get this private key in here? Because I'm on notepad over here. Mm, I'm going to just paste it into Discord or something. All right, where'd my notepads go? Too much stuff on my desktop down here. Notepad, there it is. So the one I need is the, this is the client private key, correct? And we can look over here and make sure, yes, client private key. Okay, client public this is client private so that's the one I want best way to get that to myself is gonna be this does not have to be secure we're doing this as an example oh hey Frank quality compare oh wow Frank sent me pictures of the quality versus uh, YouTube versus twitch twitch is significantly better my goodness I look awesome <laughs> all right uh I just need to post this somewhere in here. I'll post it somewhere I can get to it. It won't matter. Uh, oh, we'll post it in security and VPN. <laughs> Paste. There's a nice key. Nobody's going to know what that's for. Everybody's going to be like, what? People who aren't watching the stream. So now I'm going to go to Discord. This is not the way to do it, right? Don't use Discord for this. <laughs> that would be a bad idea. Uh, And don't email it either. So the nice way to do when I did it through um, using note on my the note app on my Mac, it was I could open it on my phone and it was fine, secure, whatever. Where'd it go? Security. Where'd it go? Oh, it's probably because it was only showing me. There you go. VPN. Okay, there it is. So now. Let's see. Why can't I copy that? Can I copy that? Oh, don't delete message. Copy text. Okay. We'll go here and we'll paste. Yes. All right. Did it. Now, uh, what you can see here is that we put the private key in and it generated the public key. And if you looked in detail at this public key, it's actually the same as this. So their little formula makes those two the same, right? All right. What's the chat saying about that? It's airplay, so it's probably one way. Oh, yeah, this thing, I, I wish, you know, this is the free version. I think if you pay, if you do the pay version, which it might be worth me doing. Hey, quick fire. Thanks for following, brother. If you, uh, if you use the pay version, I might be able to cut and paste it with this power mirror. I don't know. I'm, this is still new to me. I appreciate, I can't remember now who told me to do it. Was it William? Somebody told me to use this and it was, it's pretty good. Saving in your last pass. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, I could have done that too. I, I have one of those password applications. I have one password is the one I use. So that's a good place to do it. Something that's secure. So when you copy it from your machine here and paste it uh, into the client, you've done it in a secure way, right? You don't want to let this go. Oh, John made a great point. Uh, there's no way that another server on the network will know to say via the Pi and not 
okay. I don't get that. Can you paste into the mirror? Yeah. So that was what, yeah, I think it's one way, JJ. Uh, so far, I think it's one way. Why are you using a local IP? Are you guys answering some of those things for Pepe? Um, we'll, we'll, let's, let's do the rest of this part. Okay. So now we go back down next part. Um, the address, I can remember if we go down here, these were the examples. What did we put for the address? Okay. So that's going to be our, the address of this client. So, uh, this client we said was going to be the IP address is going to be in our configuration right here. Okay. So that's what we're going to put in here. So we're going to type in 192.168.1. Oh, sorry, not 199.2. And then do I need to do slash 24? I don't think I do because that's just telling it I allowed IPs. We're In this case, we're specifically stating that this one is going to be number two. Oh, no, we do this slash 24. Okay. All right. Listen port. Uh, it can do automatic. Okay, that's fine. MTU, we don't need to do. DNS servers. Um, do we have to put anything in the DNS server? Thank you, Adrian. Do I have to put anything in the DNS server part? I can't remember that. I think that might be it. Where is my... Oh, under add peer. Okay, so then... I think this part's done. You guys can't see it, but I think this part's done. Remote Pi LAN, okay. Okay. Now we're going to do add peer. See, I wish I could click that, but I can't. So we're going to do add peer. Now for the, for the peer, uh, we're going to do the public key, and that's our server public key. So go back to our notepad. Let me move this over here so you can keep an eye on that. So we're going to go back to our notepad. And we're going to get our, again, we're going to have to do this cut and paste, server. Hi, baby. You okay? Yeah, I just want to see you. Oh, you're warm. I love I've it. I've been in my blanket this whole time. Have you? Oh, that's mm -hmm. sweet. Okay, server public key. Server public key, got it. We're going to do this. We're also going to copy this, and we're going to paste it back into Discord. Because I put all my secure information in Discord. <laughs> somebody gave me a somebody gave me an okay sign in discord <laughs> thank you there it is <laughs> okay all right and then now in my phone go to discord give it a second there it is copy text we're in the peer we're going to paste it right there okay That's that. Shared is fine. Okay, so then endpoint. The endpoint is where you're going to put your uh, duck DNS. So uh, what did I set it up as? I think I had it as... Oh, what did I use? Let's, set, let's qu click, quickly go to duck DNS because I can't remember what address I set up for this test. And you can use a different... If you're using duck DNS for... Uh, Oh, WG demo, dummy. <laughs> All right. Okay, so what I've got for mine for today is WG demo duckdns.org. And then, dude, I have to do the port. Yes, I have to do the port. 5 1. Eight, two, and then remember I changed it to one and then allowed IPs we get this from the configuration as well six eight one no nine nine one slash 32 and then this part uh, this part this next part this is your home um, subnet. So if for me, for mine, the subnet of my device is in my home is 
um, 192.168.1. whatever. If yours is different, and some people it is, you want to put your home network subnet in there. So if you if you go to your uh, home assistant and it's a you know it's a different IP here, different subnet than mine, which means the first three numbers are different than these then you're going to want to put yours here. True that? Adrian, am I keeping us on track? Not not preaching false doctrine here? Okay. And you can see I put it in right here. And I think that's it. Is we looking good? First three octets. Oh, yes. The first three octets. I sound smart saying that. It sounds like actually something from like a, like an orchestra. The first three octets, like if I'm a singer. <laughs> okay, I think we're done. Does that look pretty good, Adrian? You give me a last troubleshoot there. I think we got it. I dare say that most people will only open a VPN to be able to securely access the home system machine. After a while, you start to think, hey, I could use this to access all my machines at home. Exactly, John. Exactly. That's the truth. I think once once you have a VPN like this set up, you start finding uses for it. You start realizing how convenient it is to be able to get into your entire home network and pretend essentially have your have your um, house function, have your remote connection function as if you were in the home. All right, R router that broadcasts can see the main network is this, and this is perfectly fine with no static routing. I've say blocked the IP tables. Cool, Scott. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. All right, let's do it. We're gonna save it, and that's that. So let's go back up here. Generate key pairs. We did that. Oh, Wall Street Journal. Saturday. How to how the movies invented Christmas. Ooh, that's gonna be so interesting. I can't wait to read it. I'm not gonna read that. Okay. And this is still setting up the client. So then the last thing if that I need to do is open a port on my router. So can I do that? Do you guys care if I show you? That's probably fine. You do it different ways, right? But um, I do mine through Google Wi-Fi. I can just show you my ports. Are, I, I already have the port forwarded. But through whatever mechanism you use, your router, um, whatever router you have, you need to open a port. So we're going to go to... It's probably going to show my password. So get ready, Adrian. Get your bottle. Port forwarding. Dun, 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 dun. So I've got a whole bunch of ports. Oh, I still have my 1194, which is open VPN. So I need to close those. Um, so this is what I've got right here. This is the one I've been working on. I don't remember what this one is. What did I do here? Oh, this was because I was goofing around with uh, encryption. So I got some port. I got some ports to close. Anyways, this is the one right here. So essentially, you just have to forward the port um, for a specific device. I it's already done, so I'm not going to do it, but whatever. You can look up how you do it on your router. Essentially, this is the port that you need to open on this machine, okay? If you don't do that, it will not work. Okay. Now, anything else? Let's see. I think we're about done. I think we're about done with the setup. I think we can probably uh, give it a test. My guess is, just based on the way things generally go, that when we first fire this up and try and test it, it's not going to work, <laughs> right? All right, Rock Climber is following. Thank you, man. So, but let's give it a go. We'll give it a go. Stream one. We just fire it up like that. The trick is I'm going to have to actually leave my home. So I'm going to turn off my Wi-Fi so that it's not connected in my network. Um, so stream one, there we go. And then to test, we're going to use ping and we'll ping an, an IP address in my house. I will be, like I said, quite surprised if it actually works. Hey, what are you doing? Why'd you turn on? Oh, it won't, when I'm off the home network, it won't let me do that. Okay, well, it's request timeout. What do I need to do? Step two? I missed a step, didn't I? Too fast, going too fast. Did this, generate public keys. Wireguard interface on the server, start, set up the clients. No, don't need that. Don't need that. Mobile clients. What was step two? What am I missing? 
What's missing? What's missing? What's missing? Is it running over here? Okay, it's running. Okay. Phone a friend. What's the... I am done. So what's my... Why is my ping not connecting, I wonder? But that should be it, right? Huh? It only works one way without an IP table rule, though. Ping from the pie? From the pie to what? Oh, okay. Adrian, if you wanted, if you, uh, if we need you to jump on, let's do it. No, I can't ping that. Ping that. No. Dang it, something's not working. Big surprise. Do you have the peer IP address configured correctly on the server? I think I had 3.2, which is only a single IP. You would want dash one four for a range. Oh, okay. Let's check it out. Here, let's do this. Discord. We're going to do... This really is an easy setup. I know I've, I've managed to botch the last bit here, but it's not bad. We'll get it fixed. Um, it's easy to troubleshoot. Oh, yeah, I just did that. Adrian and I don't know it's not it's not doing stream Oh, I wonder if I need to did I need to talk amongst yourselves. No, it's not pinging. On ping number two on the phone. Let's see, let's see, let's see. No. Please post all your banking information in Discord. It might work. I will. I'll, I'm, that's next. All right, let's see. What else could it be? Uh, I want to do, let's look at the, look at the configuration. So let's see, Mike, was it? Mike said, the peer IP address configured correctly on the server. Let's go, let's look at it and see. The peer IP address, it should it be, should it not be slash two? Slash 32, which is only a single IP address if you want to use slash 24. Oh yeah, I think we do want this to be a single though, right? I think you have a different port on your Raspberry Pi, maybe. This is the port on the Pi. I wonder, it's, got, it's most likely it's a port thing. If I had to guess at all. Oh, you know what? It probably is a port thing because um, the, I had, it, this is a whole new installation. So the network is probably recognizing it as a different machine. Didn't you set up the WG demo for this? Did you pick the one from the picker? WG demo was the uh, was the IP address was my duck DNS rerouting forwarding the port on the right address yeah I think that's probably where the problem is so let's go to the let's go to the router and we're gonna we're gonna delete this we're gonna delete this port forwarding rule and do it again because I think since that that pi is a different device now, essentially, right? It's a different, it's a different machine to the network. So I think we just try doing it again. Okay, we're gonna find, I do love that this puts them in the right order. This one. We're gonna do five one, which one is it? Five one eight two one. And it's UDP. Okay. Well, let's go back here. <laughs> Turn it off. 
and back on. And then I do need to disconnect the Wi-Fi because I don't want it to go directly. I want to connect to something in my network. Man. No. Does it indicate on the phone that it is connected? It does give me the v the VPN sign that's on the phone, but it is not, when I try and ping, it's not pinging. Hmm, you set up the W demo for this at picker, not the IP4. Interested in how you've got that arranged. Okay, good, you guys are chatting about something else. Okay, where do we see? Adrian, what do you think? You can shoot me Discord, Adrian, because it's faster than on the, the uh, stream chat. But if there's some other way, what are we missing? My ports are correct. I don't have a reason. This is running. Can you send me your config on Discord? Uh, you mean from the phone? Oh, here we are. All right, let's see. IP is correct. Send me the config. Um, on the client. Okay, yep, I can do that. Yes, okay. We can do that. You just want screenshot? Uh, I could actually just share this on the stream too. <laughs> well, first time every time. It really is. It, I'm sure that the the solution is not a hard one to figure out. So we'll figure it out. And it's uh, the keys at least. Uh, let's do it this way. Let's do it this way, Adrian. Let me show you. Because I think we can do it with... I can just screen mirror and show it to you. So let's troubleshoot this way. So we're going to go in here and we can edit this and you can look at this. So it is, it is a simple setup and which is, which is what makes it so nice because even this, um, even this is troubleshootable because there's only a few variables. We've got a few keys. We've got some IP addresses and some ports. And as long as we get those lining up, right, which apparently at this point we don't have something lined up, right. But <laughs> then this is why I like watching live streams later. It allows you to peek if the doc is going to succeed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's funny. We should have like bets. Is this one, is this going to work? No notification, Gary? We're going to talk about that at the end of the stream though. Let, remind me at the end of the stream to talk about that. All right. So the keys, let's look at these. We're going to troubleshoot this one at a time. Let's go to an easy place to see the key. So this is our configuration for our server. So our server public key, which is gonna show up as the peer key here, is this one that starts with V slash Y. Okay, so we're gonna assume that the rest of that is the same. Fair enough. We're gonna do, let's look at our allowed IP addresses. That should be fine. Okay. And the other one we need to see, the other key we need to see up here is our, which one is this one? That's the public, that's the peer public key. Okay, that looks right. What are you seeing, Adrian? Oh, that's right. Thank you. Adrian found it. Adrian found it. Okay. Again, my dumbiness. What happened? The only, the only problem here was that I set this up with DuckDNS from work yesterday. 
So what happened is the IP address that DuckDNS had when I set up that URL is the hospital's IP address, right? So <laughs> let's use a different, instead of WG demo. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back here. Uh, instead of WG demo, we're going to put uh, my other test, my other test uh, duck DNS address. Why oh, can't it make it easy for me here? Don't make it easy for me. No, don't give me a keyboard. No. Oh, stop it. Okay. There we go. We're going to get rid of this and we're going to put Dr. Z's three dot duck dn what in the world happened over here duck dns good grief this is not a very typing friendly little interface is it okay now now we're gonna save this <laughs> and it's restarting oh it's we're gonna have to shut it off but that was the problem yep you got it adrian thank you so much oh my gosh my my yeah so DuckDNS was not forwarding when I put the URL in, when I put that demo, when I put that in, it wasn't forwarding to my home. It was forwarding to the IP address of the hospital, the public IP address of the hospital. Rookie mistake. Rookie mistake. <laughs> only only 13, 108 on YouTube. Come on, guys. Everybody's going. Will it explode? Not this one. I don't think. Okay. Now we're going to disconnect, so you're going to lose the image there. And now we're going to fire up the ping. <laughs> mm -hmm. that org, that one's right. You can tell by my silence that the ping also didn't work. <laughs> Real test. Turn off Wi-Fi on your phone and see if you can still airplay through VPN. Oh yeah, that's a great that's a great way to do it. That is a good test. I'm just trying to ping an IP address in my home. Oh, it's not doing it. Okay. Does he still take a drink for that? I'm going to. <laughs> ah, okay. We're almost there. We're going to get this. I don't know why. Okay. Oh, pseudo WG on the pie. Okay. That I probably turned it off or something. Stop, what are you doing? Pseudo WG. So that's what I got. Do I have something switched? <laughs> I'm awful. Watches from the beginning later. Don't like reading the last chapter first. <laughs> does it say connected? So it does say connected. Like my, it's, the VPN is connected, but I'm not able to ping an IP address in my home or this Pi server. So we still have an ad address or a number that's wrong somewhere. Problem I have with VPN on your home network Wi-Fi is that it's not, it just got confusing trying to VPN from home. So I do everything over LTE connection. You might have more luck, yeah. Still not connected. It must show latest handshake. Ping the Pi first. Double check the port forward on your router. It's one of the things that makes this nice, like I already said, is there are there are only so many parts to it. And even for a guy like me, the parts are pretty easy. You know what I could do for the, the what I could do is uh not even use the duck DNS. We could just go straight to the home. Um yeah, it's there. 
This is 164, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I used. Oh, the port is wrong. <laughs> I, I mistyped the port. Good grief, boy. I mistyped the port. I typed 51831, not 21. <laughs> See, there's always an answer. It's not the computer's fault. It's not the, the computer's not broken. The computer is working as it's supposed to work. You just have to not be a bonehead. Right? <laughs> okay. Let's see. Here we go. Here we go. We are about to celebrate. Let's get it right this time, Z's. Turkey. UDP, the port is. I'm going to look at it this time, the whole time. Five, one, eight, two, one. 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 Done. All right, now the port is forwarded. The Wi-Fi is off on the phone. WireGuard, stream one. It's the loose nut behind the wheel. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? I like saying it's the an error occurred between the chair and the keyboard. Okay, now we're gonna ping. Okay, if you have fingers, cross them. Yes! Yes! We did it! We did it! <laughs> so now we're going to connect here so you can see. Oh, I can't do the screen. It won't let me do the screen mirroring for some reason. But anyways, it's working. It is working. You see that? You can see? Ping, 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 ping. Yes! All right, we'll stop the pinging. So now let's go through this for just a second because problem in the chair, not in the computer. It's a picnic. Oh, very nice. <laughs> uh, probably because of the network, the VPN case could be. Yeah, it could be. I don't know. You know, I don't know the details of how this power mirror thing works. But anyways, um, you just your last live stream had two to three heart attacks in the last thing. <laughs> no, Adrian, man. This this uh this is normal stuff. In fact, the fact that we actually fixed it is a miracle. I mean, that makes it uh one of the most successful live streams I've ever done. <laughs> How about that? Okay, so let's talk about for a minute. I want to talk about the um what we just did, the troubleshooting steps. So let's go through them. Okay. Uh <laughs> true story, right? True story. This is one of the most successful live streams I've ever done. Uh so what we had to troubleshoot, we opened the configuration file on the server and we checked the keys and we made sure that uh, the, the server public key was the same one that, well, we, we needed to check that I had them in the right places because I did do, I made that mistake before. I've made a lot of mistakes before, but make sure that your keys are in the right places that you didn't accidentally put, because this is what I did uh, the first time I walked through this. It, here, this is supposed to be a public key, and but I accidentally copied in uh, the private key right here or something like that, right? I copied this in there, and so why well, I want to connect? Well, because, you know, again, the knucklehead put this in there. <laughs> Adrian says, check the ports, check the IP, check everything again. <laughs> um, okay, so make sure that your keys are in the right places, both in your configuration on your server and in your configuration on your client, which in this case was on the phone. So double check with this list that the private keys are in the right place and the public keys are in the right place. All right. Step one. Number two, um, make sure you've got your port forwarding set up correctly so that you've got the correct port, which is this port in the right places. That's going to mean 
there's three places that where you can mess that up. You can mess that up in your configuration on the server. You can mess that up in your configuration on the client and you can mess that up in your router. And I managed to do two of those three. <laughs> so you want to make sure that your, that your port is correct in those three locations. Uh, IPs, make sure you're allowed IP addresses, which are going to show up again in their configuration on your client and in the configuration on your, um, server. Um, and you've got it. There's, there's the, uh, oh, and then the endpoint, right? And then in the endpoint, don't forget to mention the zeros are right. Doc. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so the other thing was in the endpoint being the duck DNS, uh, address or your home IP address. Make sure that in, when you do the endpoint, the endpoint is kind of the target, right? Of your client. So when you are looking at, um, your client, you want to make sure that whatever your endpoint is, that it really is pointing to your home IP address. That is twice that I made that mistake, two different setups that I made that mistake because we didn't know I was used to the open VPN being set up so that, um, everything went through the tunnel. And so one, when I, when I was connected through open VPN and I went to my, what's my IP.com or whatever at work, it would show me that my laptop was connected to my home IP address. But with, because I have this split tunnel with WireGuard, it didn't do that. And it, and it, it, so it left it on my, it left most of the connections from my uh, laptop going through the hospital's public IP address. So when I did what's my IP, it showed the hospital's IP address instead of my home IP address. And so when I set up a new DuckDNS address, that was the IP address that it connected to. And then I used that IP address today or that URL today. So the point is, let's do that, Adrian. So where's that step again? So if you want to not have the split, that's what you're talking about, Adrian, correct? Another live fix. Don't forget you fixed uh, LED lights on from Rob. What did, what did he do? Another live fix. Don't forget you fixed LED lights. Oh, Rob did something won't know how to talk to the 10 network. Let's see if the VPN server internal address is this VPN interfaces on this network gateway is this, how can you get a reply from pinging? Oh, that was, so we did on the, um, where did we do that? Was it the client? When we did the allowed IP addresses on the peer. So let me, let me put this back up on the screen for you. Okay. So in here, right here, see where I've got this allowed IP addresses. The first part of this is the nine, nine, but then comma, and then this, then this group of IP addresses. So now my client can connect to any of the IP addresses in this subnet on the network. Does that answer your question, John? I actually think I answered your question. Wow. <laughs> it's not being done by routing, but we already said ages ago it was natting. Oh, I hope you guys aren't, you guys, everybody's cool. <laughs> Nobody's getting upset. Can you ping the other direction uh, as it is configured? Home network to VPN client. That's a good question. Michael, uh, what do you think, Adrian? Can you ping from, I guess I could try. Uh, did I disconnected it though. So yes, well, 0.99 is my phone. No, this is, how are we gonna, how are we gonna explain that? Um, I guess this is the virtual network. So this is my phone, yes, this is my phone. As far as WireGuard is concerned, this is my phone. The WireGuard server is 99.1 and my phone is 99.2. So if you're going to set up, if you're going to set up another, um, if you're going to set up another client, then you would need this to be copied um, down here. Can I do that? 
like this, but you would have you would have to have a different name here, right? And, and I'm, this is not the way to do it, right? You want to go through and generate the keys, of course, but you would have a different client, you'd have a different name or a different uh, deal here, and then you would have to change this address because it, you can't have both of them be two. This is my phone, and so you could name them that way. I could name this one phone, I could name this one laptop or grandma's house or whatever you want to do, and then this would have to be another number in the in the IP um, subnet. That explain that? Oh, it went to sleep. So what, now one thing Adrian wanted me to, to uh, go back over to is the part about um, this. Okay, so if I were to, on my phone, in under allowed IPs, we can edit this, when I go to allowed IP addresses, if at the end of this I were to add 000, zero, zero da, 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 slash zero in the allowed IPs on the client, all the traffic will be directed through this interface. So that would take away that split, uh, split traffic or split tunneling that Luma called it, right? So as I've got it set up, the only things that will route through the tunnel are when I put in uh, one of the IP addresses of my house, like my home assistant is 71. So 192.168.1.71.1.71. That's when I put that into my phone in a browser, it'll go to that. But what if I put google.com, it goes to Google directly from my phone using my data from the phone and the connection from the phone directly. It doesn't go through the house first. If at the end, if, if right here I add comma, space 0 0.0.0.0 slash zero. Oh, and then exclude private IPs. Oh, that's a new option. I hadn't seen that pop up before. What do you think about that, Adrian? Save that. Now, pretty useful on public Wi-Fi networks. Yeah. So that's if you don't, that's if you don't want, if you want all your Google searching and all of your YouTube watching and your online banking to be routed through your home before it goes out to wherever it's going, say you're sitting in a coffee shop or whatever, then you want that, you want that at the end of your client allowed IP addresses. And that will make everything, now all your traffic will tunnel through your home and then out to wherever it's going. Cool? Cool? Let's see, do we have, I missed that the VPN was natting, sorry. Okay, cool, awesome. Okay, so how did we do? How did we do? We got it working, which is a miracle in itself. Not really. With a guy like Adrian helping, it's not a miracle. It is not a miracle. Santa is going to be so good to Adrian for, for dragging me along through this. So I am super happy about this. Super, super happy. This was a pretty useful stream. Good. I'm glad. Let me do, let's do one more thing. Let's add, um, let's do, let's do the thing where we add, uh, by using the, um, the picture. So we're, we're going to do it again. Well, we're not going to go through all that again. It's not going to take nearly as much time, but one way to make sure that you don't have the potential typos is to use the script that Adrian, let's see, I want to not save it to use the script that Adrian has, uh, has made for us, which will let us set up a client with a QR code. Ooh, yeah. So we're going to set up a client with a QR code. Yep, you got it, Scott. You saw it coming. So let's go to that point. And that's up here. So what we want to do, instead of uh, going through these steps where we generated the keys and and set up the configuration manually. So quick down. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do, we're going to get rid of the configuration. Oh, I can I, oh, I know what I need to do. Oh gosh, come on. Right click. Okay, so this is gonna wipe things. This isn't the command you're gonna use all the time. This is gonna turn off my uh, WG wire guard. And then, can I run these at the same time? No, I can't. <laughs> That's two commands. Okay. So quick down. So that turns off. WireGuard. Quick down. Hey, baby. 
You coming to give me a kiss? Are you done yet? No. Okay. Not yet. Mm. Mm, I love you. I love you. Well, I did give me downstairs. Okay. All right. And now we're going to remove... Now we're going to remove the wire guard configuration. Okay? Done. All right. So now, nothing that I just did will work anymore. Okay? So now we're going to do... What's that, Adrian? Do I need to put that? Oh, okay. Adrian's explaining things. Fantastic. Thank you, Adrian. Yes, baby? It's not working downstairs. What's not working? We're watching it, but it's not working. The stream's not working? Yeah. Really? Yeah. How come? Mm -hmm. oh, I don't know. Okay. We'll keep trying. Okay. I love you. I love Speaker. you. Speaker. Okay, close it off. I love you. I love you. Okay. Oh, by putting the two. Oh, okay, cool. I didn't know that. There's a good Linux tip for me. Thank you, Rock Climber. One command after the other. Pseudo WG, not sure. Make sure it's not running. Okay, we'll do that. Pseudo WG. Nope, not running. Good morning, Whitey. Mac made the back end again. Who's had sleep? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I have had sleep. It, I feel so much better this morning than I did last night. Last night wasn't quite so bad. The night before that, oh man, I was a zombie. I was a zombie. It was so hard. Okay, let's go back to, now we're going to use this user script, right? We can go now follow this guide instead. All right. WireGuard user man management script is a simple WireGuard user management script using VPN server, client config file, QR codes are generated. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. So we're going to install, in order to use this uh, user management script, we're going to install GREN code. Here we go. Excellent, excellent. So if I was going to do this, like for myself, uh, as a fresh start again, this is actually what I would do uh, instead of going through manually. And that only because it saves me the possibility of making simple mistakes, like putting a three instead of a two, um, which is what we just did that screwed all that up, right? Okay, so we do that part. Now we're going to clone this file from Adrian's repository, the WG config file boom and there it goes cloning cloning cloned and we see we've got the same message there mine says 23 this example said 17 not a big deal all right so now we're going to change the directory to our new wg config okay i'm going to start it back up at the top i hate when it scrolls all the way to the bottom um oh, i guess i could do this that would be smart. Okay. And now we're going to generate keys. We're going to do this whole line, which is going to run, which is going to run the gen key and it's going to generate the, the keys that we need. These are going to be new keys, not the keys that we used on the last one. Okay. And now we want to see those keys. So we're going to use a cat to look at the keys. And in this case, uh, I don't remember, do we have to, do I need to paste them in somewhere? I can't remember, but I'm going to, I'll do that anyways. I'll do the same thing I did before where I save them somewhere. And it's probably not a bad idea to, if you have a secure place to save them. You can always, you can always generate new ones. Uh, there's no reason that you can't generate new ones on the site, on the client and the server and just do them. Oh, if you, if you do, um, Free, D, free 3D, just um, exclamation point and then right into the hookup. I think that might get you there. And I think Juan's even got one. If you do if you do exclamation point command, it will give you a list of all the things that are already in the bot to uh, link to. Okay. All right. So we did those two things. And now we're going to edit the server details. Oh, wait. We didn't copy those over. We probably don't need to. The screen's not going to get so full. So these are gone. We, we deleted that configuration, so those keys no longer are going to serve us any purpose. So now I'm going to copy these. Got 
Okay, so now we've got a new uh, server private and server public key. Great. Now we are going to copy the sample WG def as the regular WG def. Okay, and then we're going to edit WG def. Here we go. All right. Now we did, okay, yes, we do need to paste in our server public key and our server private key. So, and it's in nano. So it's a good thing we did this. Great. I did the right thing. Big surprise. We're going to copy this. And this one is the public key. Make sure you get these in the right place because I did that wrong, didn't I, Adrian, on the setup? Um, oh, come on now. Right click. Okay. Public key, public key. Seem to match, seem to match. Okay. We're going to, now we do the private, same one. Okay. And that's it. I don't think there's anything else. Let's double check. Oh, we're going to change, well, let's change the port. Again, we're going to do, um, well, I can, we'll use the same. So we don't have to open a new port. We'll just do that one. So we don't have to open a new port. And then the VPN net, nothing to change there, correct? I think we can leave that the same. Okay. Now we're done with this. So we're going to control X and yes to save it. All right. Now we're on to the next one. Now we're going to do, we're going to edit this client conf template. right here. And again, we're going to need our server public key. Oh, no, no, wait, what do we have to do here? VPN ID. Oh, this part. This is the part we need to do here. The allowed IP addresses. Did I do it wrong? Did I mess up the ports again? <laughs> Did I really? Did I really, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, also, Dr. you need to make your site HTTPS with HTTPS or something. Defaulting to HTTPS is bad in 2018. Oh, you mean my drzease.com? Okay. I'll have to tinker with that. Thank you. Oh, you're trolling me, you stinker. <laughs> you turkey. All right. So, um, allowed IP addresses. So, so, what I want is the same... Uh, this is, again, this is mine. This is my example. Yours could potentially be very different. Um, I think the begin, the first part, you probably want to do the same. Aye, 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 come on. Does it matter if there's a space after the equals? I guess in some there is, in some there isn't. Um, and then again, uh, so this is the virtual network IP address with the uh, subnet here. This is my home subnet. So if yours is different, you want yours here. And then if you want to have it be split tunnel, meaning only connections to local IP addresses on your home network go through this tunnel, then you leave it as it is. If you want it to be all your traffic, then you can do the zero, 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 whatever, right? Never actually checked. So it could have been wrong, you stinker. <laughs> Scott's getting cold for Christmas for troll in the dock. Jeez. All right. Anyway, so if you wanted, that was the, this part again. If you, if you wanted all your traffic to go through, oops, not commas, dots. Slash zero like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll do that this time. All right. And then I think that's it. These things are going to fill in variables that it will generate. So we don't have to do anything else with those. We just needed to put in the allowed IP addresses. Beautiful. Control X. Oops, I'm in the wrong window. Control X. Yes. Yes. All right. Bum, 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 bum. Bring up the user, the uh, interface. We need to generate a configuration file, but we don't need to put anything in it. So we're going to use this command, this touch, uh, yep, touch, what is happening? That just, that just got all funky. 
Okay, I just ran it again because this, when I hit clear, it gives me two prompts and it gets all messed up. No, because that is allowed, IPs can connect to. Yeah, this is a script mark. I think this is, I think this is, um, you want the whole, you want that whole gambit. So that was why it was uh, zero, right? Because you, it's going to generate IPs for you, I think. Okay. And it, and it'll, that means it'll generate the, it'll assign the clients and the servers so you don't have to define it, I think. Not to, watching 100%, the wife is pulling me away. Well, you know, you got to make her happy. Got to make her happy. Yeah. Client template, right. Okay, so we did that. Um, we just, we barely just started that, or we set up this uh, WG0 conf. We just, it's empty right now. There's nothing in it, but we had to touch it so that there was something there or else the next step wouldn't work. So we say we're gonna start it up and there we go. We started it up, but our configuration is blank currently. And if we do sudo wg, we know it's running. Okay, and don't worry about this port. This is a random thing. This doesn't matter. Correct? Correct. Uptime? Oh, what's uptime do? I need to, I need some help with the bot. <laughs> I need some help with the bot. All right, so we do that. Now we're gonna add our first user. This is the funness. Okay, we type, we take this, which is gonna run this user uh, script, I guess is what it is, right? Control L to clear. Oh, thank you. That's better than typing clear. Thank you, IO nut. <laughs> okay. Now, boom, 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 boom. See, and my head, my head blocked the QR code, so you guys can't even copy it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna turn on this power power copy again, so you can see what it looks like on the phone. All right, so now we're gonna go in here, and we're going to uh, add with the plus. And then we can create from QR code. And then, hello. <laughs> and then we can point it at, oh, we can't, we can't block part of the QR code with the QR code. If this doesn't tear a hole in the internet, nothing will. Perfect. And then I wanna name it. So we're gonna call it demo two. And there's demo two. Now we can look at the settings that it put in demo two and you can see that it did all of that stuff for us. Oh, endpoint, wgexample.com. We didn't do that. We didn't do that. I missed a step, right? Scanned perfectly on Twitch, dang it. <laughs> okay, we missed a step. Where did I need to put in my, oh, endpoint server listen. Oh, there it is. That's where I missed, right here. See that? In the server details, I missed that part. So let's delete this. We're going to delete, 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 delete. Demo two, goodbye. Because you are wrong. So we need to go back and do a control L, you say, right? Control L. Ah, oh, thank you, so much better. Now we're gonna back up and see where did we configure oh I probably need to I need to turn it off I need to go down so that I can mess with it a little bit mess with the configuration and then I'm gonna go back to nope nope that was the client config this one yeah so you see this I left a big old big old mess right here oh shoot how do I undo that no Sure, there's a better way. Okay, I, I this has always messed me up because I can't. You put this cursor here, and you think, oh, that's where I'm, my changes are going to happen, and it's not. Your changes are going to happen where that little cert, where that little cursor is right there. Stinker hiding from me. So now we're going to go here, and now we're going to put in our our uh, Doctor Z's three dot duck d dns dot ORG. And then the server port, it's going to grab it from right there. So now we're ready. Let's try that again. Yes. Okay. Get that back to a viewable position. And
now we're gonna this should be the same that should still be there we don't have to run that step again we'll do that to get it back up again we'll check and make sure it's running oh now it's got a client so i do need to delete that got distracted forgot the wg that's right somebody somebody distracted me about the port scott <laughs> okay so i need to remove how do i do this let's see if i can do this my, on my own sudo remove wg dot conf no it's not conf is that conf yes it is ah i didn't do it right <laughs> I need to do, can I just do it again? Can I just run this, the um, user again, the user script, or do I need to do generate the whole thing again? Because this I can leave, right? The topic just dropped in. Hey, Danny, we are doing, no, I did something wrong. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Adrian. Oh, you're probably pinging me in Discord and I'm not paying attention. I'm so sorry, dude. Do not delete WG config. No. So now what? <laughs> did I? Did I? <laughs> Adrian's like screaming at me in Discord and I'm not hearing him. Oh, brother. Oh. Oh, I see. How's it going, brother? Yeah, we're, we're just finishing up the uh, second uh, means of doing uh, VPN. It's uh, WireGuard. Yeah, the good news is, the good news is, Adrian, um, I don't know how to delete the config because obviously I put the wrong command in, <laughs> so I didn't delete the config. Okay, um, so I just need to do, a, so I just need to run the client part again. Okay, so once I fixed that config, once I can fix the address in that configuration, that so it's actually going to my home network, now I can just run this part again with the new client. Sweet. All right, Jan, X-Ray Jaden, how's it going, brother? All right, so here we go again. We're gonna run this. Oh, good, we're still mirroring. It appears we are still mirroring. No, it appears we're not mirroring. Yeah, we should, now we're mirroring. Okay. Oh, wait, what happened? Oh, that's what we did. We just deleted the one client. I am doing fantastic, X-Ray. Thank you, man. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to run. So we're going to run. We're going to run. We're going to run this. We're going to run this. Okay. So what Adrian had me do with this sudo user shell D client is delete that one client. And I could just up. Oh, and I could just go up, right? I just up arrow. Yeah. There we go again. All right, so, and then you can see this here. Here, we're gonna do from a QR code. And there, and we're gonna call it, again, we're gonna call it demo two, save it. Now, because I already have the port open, let's double check, triple check. This is the one. Scott, does that look like the right port to you? <laughs> hey, X-Ray Jaden, thanks for following, man. Should hide the QR code from you though. Well, I'm, I'm too late. Yeah, I'm, I'm deleting all this. This won't matter anymore. This isn't my real installation. Like once we're done with the stream, I pull that, um, that SD card out of this pie and wipe it and do something else with it. So none of this, none of this matters. This isn't my real stuff at all. And it's blocked by my head. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> all right. So now let's see if we can connect, right? We got the port. Let's just see if we can connect. My guess, because it's just the way things go, is that we will hit some sort of a snag, but there's always the potential that we have a little Christmas miracle and an angel gets its wings. Okay. Demo. Oh, we're going to move this out of the way. I guess I don't have to leave that up. Okay. Now we're going to go to ping. And the moment of truth. Perfect. Perfect. 
first time, every time. Yeah! Hmm. All right, everybody, pat yourselves on the back. We did it. Mm. Adrian, you're the man. You are the man. I cannot thank you enough. So there we go, boys. We have done it. So that was two methods for setting up uh, the the WG, uh, the wire guard setup. Oh, x-ray's gone already. All right, man, take it easy. You can come back and watch the replay. But you have to set up a client. If your client connects first, then you wouldn't be able to assume at least. My work here is done. Adrian's done. He's wiping his hands. Actually, so um, to kind of answer your question there, Scott, I think what you're saying, you, you, you nothing that I did. So let's, let's back up. When I was doing this step-by-step -step guide here, you have to do this part. That doesn't change. You have to do this part. You have to do this. This, I mean, this is just testing. But then when you get to this point right here, you don't have to do any of this other manual stuff if you use the, the method from this link right here. The method from this link is what we just did, and you don't have to do any of it. You don't actually have to set up uh, the client. The script even sets up, uh, not the client, sorry, the server. The script even sets up the server. So we just put in, we just did that um, touchwg.conf, and that made a blank configuration file. And then when we ran the script, when we ran that user.sh, it fills in what we wanted in that wgconf and cr essentially creates our configuration for the, for the um, server as well at the same time as it generates what we need for the client. Is that cool, I think? I don't think you're getting what I was trying to say. Sorry, probably explained it badly. It's all good though, it works. Okay, <laughs> that never works. In the end, it works. Never actually watched a live stream, usually too late in the UK. Well, I'm gonna try and do them earlier. That's for sure. Time for a Christmas party now. Frank, you have a great time at your Christmas party, brother. Are you going to wear the hat? I hope so. Or, or, or another hat. Similar hat. The ugly sweater contest has is, is no comparison to the Frank Stream hat contest. <laughs> I loved your hat, Frank. It was awesome. I love it. Uh, a few recently at 5 p.m. UK time. Yeah. So this is now number 11. So I think we're done. You guys can ask questions. We still have uh, Adrian here probably for a little bit longer. I'm going to get done. I'm going to sign off. We'll call the kids up here in a few minutes because we are done. We did it. We got WireGuard, the 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 up and coming, the uh, next big thing in VPN, which has probably been around for a couple of years already, actually, I think. But anyways, it's, uh, it's fantastic. It's really good. It's really easy for guys like me. Um, and, uh, I'm just going to, it's running on my laptop now constantly. And I will always, anytime that I am on my laptop, no matter where I am, I can just type in my home assistant IP address and I can pop up home assistant and start working on it. I can connect to my configuration folder and start tweaking files. I can look at my IP cameras. I can, I can dial up my individual, um, tasmatized devices from anywhere, anytime. And it's lightweight and it's secure and, uh, it was super easy to set up. So it's fantastic. Um, if you have any reason to need to get remote access to your home network, this is a great way to do it. So is oh, Frank. Oh yeah. Frank. No, Frank's Frank's usually Fridays and Wednesdays, I think. So all oh, men on stream time for a party now that it's done. Oh yes. Well, we're going to party tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to do the 10 AM again. So same time that we started this one and we are going to do the, um, we're going to do a Christmas party. We're going to just kind of have some fun. We'll, we, we'll do some things. We'll answer questions and that kind of stuff. I'm not going to come with a super um, prepped topic. We're, we, can, we can cover things or we can goof off. Um, it's, it's just going to be fun. I'm going to probably wear a funny hat. Uh, Frank got that trend started, so I'll get a funny hat on and we'll have a good time. So I'm excited about it. Dino, hey, how's it going, man? Didn't see you there. Airplay, JC, you talking about how I shared my screen? Are you asking how I shared my screen? This is uh, a power a power mirror, and it works on Mac and iOS, or sorry, Mac and Windows and Android and iOS. So it's pretty nice. Not done anything with Node Red yet. Ooh, Node Red's cool. Node Red's cool. Node Red's cool. And there is some cool Alexa integrations as well. I started talking a little bit about the ways to do Alexa without. Sorry for all of you that didn't turn, didn't mute your devices yet, but does not. No, does AirPlay work through the VPN? Oh, yeah, it did. Oh, no, wait, did it? 
you're good good point i don't i think let me try it again i don't think it did i don't think it did i'm sorry now i understand your question <laughs> it says looking for apple tv i you know it might not because i think tell me if i'm wrong guys but does airplay set up its own virtual network is that how it works so but maybe if i had if I had opened all the traffic, that should work, right? Still running. Yeah, I don't know. Does AirPlay work through the VPN? It doesn't seem, this part doesn't seem to. And this this power mirror thing is works on AirPlay. Like when I do this, the screen mirroring, it's it's going through AirPlay, but it's not connecting. So maybe it's a limitation of that app. Yeah, should be. So broadcasting, which does not work with your VPN set, yeah you have said at this point okay that's cool whole live stream will be how about to exit from vim <laughs> all right stable thanks man escape q what is that what are you guys talking about i'm missing something so anyways let me call up the kids let's see see if we can call up the kids Nope, that's not going to work. All right, let's try this. Um, computer, tell everyone it's time to come up and do sign off. Announcing. It's time, time to come up and do sign off. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Love your red boxes on Lovelace. Yeah, thanks, Frank. I, you know, I had it working. It was working yesterday. So I don't know. This is a custom, custom card. Mini media player. So. Sign, off time. <laughs> sign off time. Sign off time. Click on the three dots. Still glitching. <laughs> oh yes now thank you gary wanted me to oh that's right let's cover that real quick don't make too much noise in the microphone the little sweet girl <laughs> you two boys in the back need to like crouch down or something <laughs> in, a in a sec we can just see your chests you, you big monsters okay what i wanted to show you is the google calendar and how you can do your um Thanks for the VPN instructions. You saw this stream. You need to go back and watch from the beginning. It's a good one. It's very useful. So look, we got 269 entries in the contest for the HA switch plate. I think I'm going to probably do two. I think I might just give away two from this one if I can. Okay. So if you go down here, if you click on one of these things, uh, let's see. So what I would suggest you do is click this add to Google calendar right here, and that will add it to your Google calendar. And I'm going to pull up my Google calendar. You can all see when we're going places or whatever. It's fine. Um, and then when I click on the calendar over here and go to settings in here, it, there's a place to do notifications right here, event notifications. So did you follow that? How you, how I got here? And then you just add a notification. So what I do, I've done this. And now every time that somebody is about to go live, I get a notification on my phone from, from Google calendar 10 minutes before they go live. You did that already? Okay. Hmm. And it didn't work. Bummer. Can't share screenshots here. Oh yes. I'm on discord. Let's do it. Adrian, what did you need? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, let's just show it. Oh, where'd it go? Lego awesome. Yeah, he was showing it right there. The event. So that's funny. That didn't work for you. The, um, Another thing I wanted to show was that I think not everybody has, Dawson, there's something on. here in settings. Wait, what? You already died. We have two minutes till I get in the store. <laughs> You're bush camping? Yeah. Anyways, there's a way in here you have to find your, dang it. You have to find, gosh darn. I don't know. There's a, there's a way in, in here to do it too. Shoot. That's not very good. I'm sorry. Okay, anyways, let's have the kids sign off. It's two hours.
Appreciate you guys being here. Thanks for everything. You guys are fantastics. Uh, Gary, hit me up in Discord, and we'll we'll post some things about how to get uh, notifications better. All right, I'm gonna scrunch down because I got all those big dudes in my back. Okay, you guys know what to say. As always, thanks. no, no, no. I know. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, how do you guys? Ready? As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, how do you guys? I don't know where they get this kind of show offedness. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> wonder. Wonder where they get it. All right. Hey, guys. Happy I Saturday. Tomorrow, uh, start stream, same time as this Christmas party, the 12 streams of Christmas. We did it. So have a happy Saturday, everybody. Take care. I dabbed. See ya. Grace has dabbed, and now it's officially over.